usually when we think about a heart surgeon we think about a doctor who does bypass surgeries or valve replacement surgeries of course that is the main work which we do but our team of doctors are actively involved with thoracic organ transplantation as well like the heart or the lungs and as you all know the kidneys and the liver can be given by human beings when they are alive because they are paired organs you can give a little bit of those organs while you are living but if you want to donate your heart or your lungs you need to be a person who is dead a person who is brain dead and brain death means a person's brain is irreversibly damaged will never come come back again to work but the heart other organs are all functioning normally and those are people who get involved with road traffic accidents you would be probably reading in the newspapers every day that the young people are involved with two wheelers and other type of tragic accidents because a son or a daughter or a young father or a young husband they are at the prime of their life very actively involved with various challenging activities in their life which may lead to accidents and they end up in having early loss of life the family in spite of their great loss are willing to donate their organs then only we can have heart or lungs so that is the way their heart and lung transplant get materialized i would like to tell the story of a young guy called girish who was 36 years when he came to see me about 5 years ago he was working in an it firm in bangalore and he was diagnosed to have end stage heart failure we call it dilated cardiomyopathy dcm you know the heart is an elastic organ it is a muscular organ it stretches when the blood gets filled inside and when it recoils the blood is ejected from the heart to the rest of the body when an elastic is losing its elasticity it becomes long it loses its recoiling power when the heart muscle loses its elasticity it becomes huge it dilates it's always big and filled with blood but it cannot recoil to pump the blood to the rest of the body and that condition is called dilated cardiomyopathy and this gentleman was suffering from dilated cardiomyopathy leading to an end stage heart failure and he was advised to undergo heart transplantation he came and sat beside me and i looked at him and he knew everything about his disease he knew about his condition and he knew that he needed a heart transplantation i did not have to explain much to him because he was well aware of what he has come for we have we enlisted him for the heart transplantation and about a week later a young fellow 24 years of age a male nurse who got involved with a road traffic accident gave a heart to girish and he had a successful heart transplantation done about 4 and 1/2 years ago besides the heart disease girish had another major illness which was involving his joints called ankylosing spondylitis so 6 months after the heart transplantation he underwent a hip replacement surgery as well we were all very happy that he was doing well 3 months after the hip replacement surgery he came to see me in my clinic with very high fever obviously you know when the patient accept an organ from outside you need to take certain medications called immunosuppressants to prevent the heart or the organ being rejected by the body this medicine reduces your body resistance and such patients are prone for infection we found that one of the major valves in his, in his heart the transplanted heart was infected not only it was infected but it was structurally damaged the valve was leaking very badly and his heart was not doing well we knew that the situation was very bad we explained to girish that he is having a problem with his valve and he probably would need either a valve replacement or a heart uh, retransplantation girish went through all the literature and he was being treated in the hospital all this while with antibiotics and i think he was suspecting the worst and so were we 
on the 26th day of antibiotic treatment out of 42 days he had a cardiac arrest in our intensive care unit fortunately we doctors were all there we jumped on him we started doing massage the cardiopulmonary resuscitation for a long time about 20 minutes 25 minutes passed by and we knew that this guy is not going to make it because his heart is stopped which is not his own heart is somebody else's heart but we continued because girish was so close to us he was one of the dearest patients for us because he had the trust in us he was always believing and he was always confident about what treatment he was going through and that really made us to go forward at the end of 40 minutes we could get his heart back we revived him successfully and he was continued to be treated on ventilator two days later we discontinued him of the ventilator and he was sitting up as a normal individual but with a very bad heart and a leaking valve which was not sorted out yet i went beside him and told girish we have a problem which you already know that you would need either a valve surgery or a heart transplantation again when i said it to him i knew that it was next to impossible because i have never done one one re heart transplantation in my life and i have never seen anybody doing it either and all the more it's more important that we are unable to get a heart in the nick of time it's not like you can wait for weeks or weeks to wait for a donor to come here we are dealing with the person who is going to lose his heart in the next few hours or days but i had to tell him but girish was very confident and he said doctor if you are going to do another surgery on me let it be a second heart rather than the valve replacement which was a right choice i left the intensive care unit went to my work and by around 5 pm on the same day girish had another cardiac arrest the same way what has happened to him earlier this time i knew that we lost the chance having a second cardiac arrest on a transplanted heart coming back again is next to impossible but nevertheless our doctors tried again and again cpr massaged him continued for 20 25 minutes i left the icu to my small room knowing that we are not going to make it and i wanted to tell the family that we have lost this guy and after few minutes i put my hand on my head and i was thinking i was thinking in case if we come out of this cardiac arrest what will i do that is my second thought when i peeped through my central monitor i saw his heart coming back again very miraculously about 35 40 minutes later i saw the heart beating again i saw the blood pressure coming back and slowly coming up and up and stabilizing itself i was so happy that girish could be revived again after about 45 minutes of cpr second time in 3 days time i was wondering what i will be doing when i heard a knock on my door and i looked and i saw my favorite anesthetist dr jacob coming and telling me dr jose there is a donor in a hospital nearby few miles away from our hospital same group as girish same body weight as girish it will be matching two days later when girish was sitting on the bed having his conflicts early in the morning i was wondering how we could do this great mission we were always motivated by the trust of the patient he was very confident he always used to look at me and said doctor you could do it and rather than the doctor giving confidence to the patient this gentleman kept on giving me and my team confidence which made us to persevere and persevere and persevere and he is at the moment is the only gentleman in the whole of our country living with a third heart beating on him for the last 3 years another story of a young fellow is not a story it's a real thing about a young lady called shruti she was 19 years when she came to see me the shruti of her heart was gone she had an angioplasty done on the 16th in, in uh, when she was 16 years of age and at the age of 21 she developed the same disease called dilated cardiomyopathy the muscles have lost its uh, elasticity and she was during the last few days of her life she couldn't breathe well she had swollen legs she had fluid in the lungs and her heart was barely beating we could see that this young lady need a heart soon rather than otherwise she would lose her life that's the time when we got a call from the organ sharing organization of the state of kerala 
that there is an 18 year old boy in the nearby hospital who is brain dead after an accident and the mother is willing to give the heart of her son we as a team go to the donor hospital and harvest the heart transport it across the recipient hospital which is our own and do the transplant the mission has to be accomplished in 4 hours time the moment the heart is taken from the donor packed travel transported either by air ambulance or by road police escorted to be brought to the hospital of the recipient operation the entire operation has to finish the whole operation has to finish within 4 hours of time because heart does not stay long if you take it out from the beating body so we went to the hospital and generally the donor hospital doctors like ourselves and our team does not want to interact with the family members of the donor but this time the transplant coordinator of the donor hospital told me dr jose the mother of this boy whose heart you have come to harvest wants to talk to you i told him if possible please avoid i can go and meet her at a later date because i know it's going to be an emotional situation they will be stretched and stressed with all this loss of life so if we go and get involved with their emotional upset naturally we will lose our our emotional balance as well as we may lose precious time the coordinator told me the story of this young boy when he was 2 years of age he lost his father and that time his mother was only 22 years of age the father before he died of a cancer few days before called his wife and told my love this is only treasure we have our son after my death take care of him educate him and make him an engineer and with that death wish the father died and the mother at the age of 22 without getting married again just lived for her only son the only bit which her husband left behind for her to take care of she fed him she broomed him she educated him and the wish of the father was to make him an engineer and so at the end her son got an admission for engineering in the neighboring state so as usual he went there the day or the few days before the last semester the son came back to get blessings from his mother and he got a promise from her mother that she will buy him a desired gift if he comes out in flying colors in the last semester so when he came back with good merit and he sat beside her his mother and asked her that you know you have promised me that you are going to give me a gift son whatever i have is for you i leave for you so everything is for you but what he wanted was a bike a two wheeler a strong one the young guy is move around fast the mother couldn't say no though she was not very happy six months later when her son was going to go to join the post graduate course in the neighboring state the day before he went with his friends for a last bidding farewell ceremony en route he met with an accident and he banged his head against a tree and was taken unconscious to the neighboring hospital from where he was brought to a hospital for super specialty care and he was declared brain dead and this is the boy whose heart his mother is going to give you so you may please go and talk to her few words because she insists that she wanted to see dr jose before the heart is being harvested i couldn't say no i went i went to the room slowly i saw the mother sitting there weeping she was bending down face was blotted tears coming down her eyes i went and sat beside her without knowing what to tell her she looked at me and we had a pause i went and held her arm did not know what to tell she asked me doctor you have come to take the heart of my son haven't you i paused for a moment i held her arm tight i didn't know what to say but i said mom we have been come to take the heart of your son we have come to give a second life to your son your son's heart will beat in somebody else and will keep him alive as long as heart keeps beating the tears started rolling down again i kept her silently on on the bench 
and I went and did the heart harvesting and the heart is still beating and beating for the last four and a half years in a young girl called Sudhi. Dear friends, what we call this selfless act of dedication and donation, we call it altruism. You would be knowing what the word means, altruism. We are all people, good people, we are all people who wants to do selfless dedication and devotion and giving to the society. But in the bottom of your sadness, at this lowest level of our moral laws and physical and material laws, if you want to give what you have left behind to somebody else for its benefit, that activity is called altruism. This is a mother who lost her husband when she was 22 and grew up her son at from the age of two years, brought him up, made an engineer as her husband wished and did post-graduation and at the end of the day, she lost her, everything what she has dreamt for, lived for and the depth of her loss, she has taken the heart away from her son and gave it to somebody else to leave. That is a great act of altruism, selfless dedication and goodness to the society being offered. Look at our society nowadays, we fight on religion, we fight on money, we fight for possessions and nations and politics and everything. But we know the organs have no color, organs have no religion, organs have no race or any divisions or disparity, it suits everybody. So that is the message which the organ donation brings to the society. It's not only the giving life to another individual, but also the great sacrifice which we do to the rest of the society. So whenever I talk about organ donation, I talk about this selfless act of altruism, which should be the model living for a day-to-day -day living of our individual. When we look at the coming decades, I think the organ donation should be promoted because we know that the person who is lost is lost. Nobody is going to take their organs to heaven. It has to give life to numerous thousands of people who otherwise would die. The organ do donation should prevail for the decades to come so that nobody should die of organ failure. And also it gives a great message of altruism to the society. Thank you very much.